Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is John Martin, and I'm here with Allison Flero from Dialogue Insight, and we'd like to welcome you to uh, this morning's webinar. We're going to spend a little bit of time today uh, talking about marketing personas. Uh, I just want to go through a little bit of housekeeping with you. Um, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to ask them in the question box. I'm sure we'll have time to get to them, you know, near the end of the presentation. And um, the webinar today is being recorded, so we will be circulating a, both a copy of the recording as well as a copy of these slides. So if that helped you with your with your note taking or or thoughts, um, we'll be passing those along as we go. So let's get right into it then. Um, marketing personas. Let's start with a question. <laughs> so the big question is, what is a marketing persona? A marketing persona is a conceptual character that represents and communicates attributes of distinct set of people within a target market. It's based on both qualitative and quantitative information. The principle of personas comes from Alain Cooper, the creator of the computer language Visual Basic. He has had a long career at Microsoft which led to the setting up of Windows and all its interfacing. In his book, The Inmates Are Running the Asylum, he says we should stop developing programs for developers and develop for the people that will use the product. Here's a quote from the book that explains what it's about. Help team members share a specific, consistent understanding of various audience groups. Data about the groups can be put in a proper context and can be understood and remembered in coherent stories. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that definition apart you know, throughout this presentation a little bit, but it does make total sense that, you know, whatever uh, solution you develop, you know, is focused at, you know, the right target market or, or the, the people who are actually going to use the solution. Um, a good friend of mine, very successful businessman who uh, ran a business literally from the trunk of his car to uh, several billion dollars per year, his name is Jim Estel. He has a relatively simple view of marketing and says marketing is selling to more than one person at once using the same message. So as successful as Jim is, I'd like to put it to you that this view is perhaps overly simplistic. Uh, using personas, we can help you uh, understand you know, your market and your contacts and perhaps personalize the messages so that you get you know, better results. Um, so, uh, Businesses provide unique value, so why bother with personas? Well, sim these days, uh, you need to stand out in the inbox, okay? Everybody gets an average of, you know, 200 or more emails per day, and on average, only 30.4% of these are opened. All of these emails land in the same inbox as yours. Uh, you have to find a way to get them to stand out. Using personas, we can help you do a little bit better job than Mr. Bean here, who uh, you know, is trying to give everybody the same newsletter. We can help you uh, focus your message so that it goes to the right persona. So we thought we'd start today by talking about a couple personas that we use here at uh, Dialogue Insight. Uh, so we have two. Uh, we have two or three that we're going to look at, but Ashley is one of our personas. We think of Ashley as a marketing director, and when we talk about this persona, we think client accompaniment, um, the flexibility of the platform, and ease of use. Another person that we have a persona for is Patrick. Patrick's a little bit more technical. He's in charge of uh, marketing intelligence, so for him, we have different objectives that we speak to about how robust the platform is, its flexibility, the data structure that goes into the platform, and the ways you can connect other systems you know, to the marketing platform. These are all things that's important to Patrick that perhaps are um, different than, than the way they're important to, to Ashley. Now, what evolves, and this goes back to Allison's definition about developing for the people that use the platform, that's a Microsoft view. Marketing, in this case, is much more than 
uh, promotion or advertising. Marketing speaks to all aspects of strategy and design and the communication and delivery of a solution you know, to your clients. So in this respect, um, marketing, it's important that all of your team members understand marketing so that the solution you know, can go out to the right, the different personas or, the, or that the needs of each persona you know, could, be, could be met. So consider, why would someone take the time to go into your store? Why would they pick up the phone and call you? What is their objective in doing all of that and their goal? And how can you improve things for them? So we have a couple of steps that, uh, you know, hopefully provide a little commonality in doing this. The first one, of course, is research. So what we need to do in the research phase is accumulate all of the information uh, that's available to us on clients and use it to build kind of a mega data center. There's lots of ways to find this data one-on-one -on -one interviews, context, contextual interviews, focus groups, surveys, product testing, market analysis. Um, these are all things that businesses have more or less at their fingertips that we need to think of in terms of refining you know, the, the, the techniques and uh, the processes. Out of this, um, it, it, Sorry, let me back up a minute. You also have a great deal of digital sources as well. Things like Google Analytics, social media statistics, your CRM data, and even your email results. Even collecting the behavior results you know, through the platform to understand how your personas um, you know, collect and seek out and collect and process you know, information. So once you and this this is always changing. I mean, new new sources of information are always going to become available to you, and it's up to you to uh, you know build them into your personas in in such a way that you can you know add to your uh, to your knowledge base. This leads you into the next phase, which is uh, perhaps the more involved phase, which is the analysis. Now, we're showing a couple screenshots here from the platform. We've recently updated our visualizations to the point where the different segments in your contact base can be perhaps more easily understood. Taking a look at these groupings, you know, can help you, um, you know, perhaps decide on how to differentiate your personas and, um, you know, go on from there. Um, but basically, this is the phase where you do start building the persona. And what you'll find is there's some traditional groupings that can work very well. Age is one example of a grouping. It tends to be low-hanging fruit. Um, and I'll, I'll use a, a, an investment or a financial or insurance example. Um, very solid products, and I know there's a couple people on the line with us today that are in that space, and it, it's it's fairly easy to understand that the needs of, a, say, a 20-year-old, an 18 or a 20-year-old, are very different than the needs of somebody, you know, who's north of 60. So both of these people are going to buy insurance or financial products, but they have very different methods of doing so. You need to look at the information you have available, and then you need to pick away at the layers that fall out of that to define what happens in between you know, those ages, so that you have meaningful message to deliver at either end of the age scale, but you also have a meaningful message to deliver to, um, you know, the middle part, uh, say 30, 40, 50 year old, that sort of thing. So age is a low hanging fruit, but as you look for patterns in your data, you will be able to find other uh, segments so that you can create the personas that are right for you. So from the data, you not only define what is prob problematic, you can also define what the information is that this person needs. How does this person search for information? We will be, we will be able to go and seek all this information, structure it and analyze it, and help you find patterns. From this moment on, we're going to realize that there are tendencies to that these tendencies or patterns start to resemble a profile. And you'll see along the way as you build it and pull in certain elements 
that it seems to remember, resemble you know, different kinds of personas. So for us, that led to uh, the differentiation between, you know, between Ashley and, and Patrick. And the third step, these are, these are some of the data points that, uh, that we have listed here in terms of what can go into the persona. But of course, the platform is capable of gathering any data that's important to you um, and your business. So uh, don't limit yourself to this list, but perhaps this list will give you a, a starting point to how you can start thinking about this. Modeling is where you build the file for your persona. This is the third step. And the, the file will, of course, contain many different elements and information. Uh, so um, use that, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, how you think about, you know, the persona. So you develop the famous Mr. X, and, you know, Mr. X will help you see if there's an exclusive, exclusive or inclusive persona. Inclusive means they are a critical persona. They come often, they shop often, etc. Exclusive uh, customers are more, more up to your resource. Sorry, let me say that again. Exclusive customers use up more of your resources uh, but potentially than they bring in revenue. So understanding that will help you, you know, build models out to find out how to manage and de deal. Sorry, manage and deal with them. Of course, along the way, you'll, you'll develop methods to create the right content to talk to the different personas, you know, at the right, uh, you know, at the right time, you know, to help you get the job done. There's an example here provided by one of my colleagues uh, about a, a client uh, that, that operates a spa. And... Um, Basically, in, in looking at this, they found a persona they didn't realize existed, but it actually made up an important part of their clientele. It wasn't simple, it wasn't simple like age, or it really had, uh, it wasn't simple, <laughs> tripping over my own words here, it wasn't something simple like age, it really had more to do with schooling. There was a schooling level or an academic level that went very often. Uh, to the spa, that is, and they were able to speak to them more precisely uh, when they identified, you know, that segment of their market. There's a fourth step in all of this uh, that's equally important, and that's the uh, the optimization role. And for optimization, it's good to set up a periodic time frame to review all of this and make sure that it still makes sense for your business today. A good time to do this or a good cycle to do this under would be every two to three weeks. Of course, not everybody has, you know, ideal situation or the time to put into doing that every two to three weeks. Ourselves, we tend to do this on a four to six week basis. And, you know, like any other business, sometimes that's, uh, you know, more active when somebody notices something or gets postponed a little bit when things get busy. But it's important that annually you take kind of a deep dive on your personas in order to make sure that they still make sense, you know, to your business. And we do that as well. So our, our senior people, our, our marketing directors, our, our project directors, you know, they all contribute to this process to make sure that the personas remain right, you know, for our, for our business. So a couple examples uh, to give you maybe a few specifics, uh, you know, Ashley as the marketing director, decision maker, you know, she's responsible for the whole, for the whole company. Uh, so her needs are, you know, much less technical, much less black and white than somebody like Patrick. So it's important that we talk to Ashley strategically, where it's important that we talk to Patrick tactically. So these kind of messages come out and, um, and you'll be able to deliver those as well. We want to talk a little bit about how many personas make sense. And of course, this is going to be all over the map for, you know, different businesses out there as well. But in general, you should try and limit the number of personas you work with. Um, two or three 
is you know sort of a reasonable number. Uh, it's relatively easy for your staff, you and your staff, to understand. When you start getting upwards of eight or ten personas, it starts to be a little bit more complicated and a little bit harder, you know, to keep track of each one and of course the nuances of difference between them. So if the differences become too subtle, then you know, creating individual content for them, you know, could become increasingly difficult, and uh, uh, and and that's a challenge as well. So, so think about it as um, you know, a relatively limited number of personas, and then grow them, you know, as you see, you know, reasonable, you know, you know methods or reasons, you know, to do so. You can also think of uh, different personas for different products. Um, so that's another way you can you can tackle this. Uh, I'm at the end of the day. I'm more of a sales guy than than anything else. And there's uh, there's research done about different types of buyers, and I think of those as personas as well. So things like a an economic buyer, things like an influencer who's going to recommend a product, things like the final decision maker, uh, things like a technical buyer who's going to make sure you get the best solution available. These are all things that can play a part you know, of your of the personas in your business. So creating personas definitely takes time. And uh, uh, don't try and go too quickly, you know, through the creation phase. But don't don't dawdle on it or take too long either. Whether it takes one, three, or six months, it's important to realize that the job will probably never completely be finished. But you start with what you have, you build things out, and uh, over time, as you start to address these personas, you know, you'll have a lot more success in your business. Of course, we've added uh, tools in the platform to help you build out these personas, your account directors and uh, um, and business managers will help you uh, you know build these out or learn how to use those tools and uh, we look forward to uh, helping you with the process. So I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, I haven't I don't think I've seen any so far, Allison, have you? No, there are no questions. Okay, well, I, I wanted to uh, thank everybody for your time today. Uh, seems to be, we, I must have talked through this fairly quickly because I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, but uh, hopefully that'll give everybody a, a jump on, you know, getting ready for lunch. And uh, uh, thank you for your time. We're, we're glad to be working with you.